This is Dr. David Letterer coming to you from Montreal, Canada on behalf of iCare PD, where the PD stands for Professional Development. OCT angiography is our topic today, and most of you probably think that this is a cool technology, but many of you may wonder how it fits into your practice. I believe it is transformative, so let's try to understand why. Let's jump right in. When I tell you to pick up the left rock, it will be the right one, and then only the right rock will be left. It's a strange start to a lecture about OCT, OCTA, but think about this. What if you were never using the word right to mean correct? You know that it has more than one definition, but cognitively you are stuck. I know that some of you may find this concept bizarre, but let me put it another way, in a classic joke from Groucho Marx. He said, this morning I shot an elephant in my pajamas. How he got into my pajamas, I'll never know. Now look, I know that Groucho's way funnier than me, but that's not the point. Rather, the point is that you usually think in my pajamas means I'm wearing them. But in this case, he meant it as literally inside them. Here's the bottom line. Our cognitive biases limit our growth as learners. The words that we use to describe things creates a bias in our minds. And only by understanding our biases can we understand the world around us? So let's start by simply understanding angiography so we can deconstruct our bias. What is angiography? It's a medical imaging technique used to visualize the inside of blood vessels and organs of the body. That's it. Now we often do this with a contrast agent, such as fluorescein dye, in this picture here. Sometimes, we use endocyanin green for imaging the eye, and in radiology, we have gadolinium for MRIs, hexabricks for CT scans, and new contrast agents are being investigated all the time. But let's stay with our cognitive bias. Because when we think of the A of OCTA, we often try to compare it to fluorescein angiography, and this creates a cognitive bias. Why? Because fluorescein angiography looks at leak. An OCT angiography looks at flow. Hmm. Okay. Let's dig in a bit on this concept of flow versus leak. These images are a great example of the concept of fluorescein angiography because what we do is inject the dye and then take pictures of the eye at different points in time. And then we compare them to themselves and determine their pattern. This is the concept of leakage, or more specifically, how the dye changes over time. For example, here, in this group of pictures of choroidal neovascularization, you see that the early shot shows some blockage and a bit of early fluorescence. The late frames show progressive hyperfluorescence with a loss of borders. This is the pattern seen in choroidal neovascularization. In the middle series, we see an example of atrophy. What you see is you've got progressive hyperfluorescence, but the borders are maintained. And finally, in this case of central serous retinopathy, we see pinpoint leakage that turns into a smokestack in the later frames. All of these image pairs are patterns of dye leakage, and that is fluorescein angiography in a nutshell patterns of leakage, but OCT angiography is different. To understand this difference, we need to recall that angiography is just an imaging technique to visualize blood vessels. It does not have to be contrast enhanced, like fluorescein angiography. We are very familiar with this concept when we think of an MRI image, as we know that it can be contrast enhanced or not. But the corollary is the same for ocular imaging. An OCTA image is simply a non-contrast enhanced image. Okay, let's keep going with this idea and begin by understanding what is OCT angiography from a conceptual point of view. It is a transformative technology. This means it's something new. It does not replace fluorescein angiography. It images 
ocular blood vessels, meaning it's not structural data, it's vascular. It has structural images accompanying it, but the A is vascular in nature. It does this by using the concept of motion contrast, which I'll explain soon. And it thus precludes the need for contrast agents. No dyes. You know, we've talked about this as a non-contrast enhanced image, but this is really important as every year I have two to three non-life-threatening allergic reactions to fluorescein dye requiring oral prednisone, intramuscular Benadryl, and every decade I have at least one life-threatening reaction. This means I don't get a ton of FAs because I always have a concern in the back of my mind. But what I need to hammer home is that OCTA is not a replacement for fluorescein angiography. It does not do what FA does. Fluorescein angiography looks at leakage. OCTA looks at flow. I promise to explain this concept of flow more in just a couple of moments, but let me say that again so you can really crystallize this understanding as I explain it soon. Again, you will never see leakage on an OCTA with our current technology. You see flow or absence of flow. Meanwhile, fluorescein angiography will always have limited vascular resolution because of extravasation of dye. So don't think of OCTA as trying to replace your FA. This is a technology that will allow us to see and do and think of the eye in ways that we never previously imagined. Further to the point, OCTA is not a study in the analysis of patterns of leakage as is done in fluorescein angiography, but rather OCTA is a study in the pattern analysis of flow. In order to understand why an OCTA device looks at flow, you need to let go of one more cognitive bias and that is image acquisition. More specifically, in order to understand OCTA, you need to understand the context of how the image is acquired. Take this modified MC Escher picture. Are these people moving up or down? Well, it depends on your frame of reference, and this is the point. Only by understanding the frame of reference for image acquisition in OCTA more deeply can we be prepared to use it clinically. So now you may be thinking, okay, no contrast, no leak, only flow. I get it. Well, kind of. But how does the device do that? This is how. It all begins with a scanning matrix. Basically, a plan of where to scan is overlaid on the retina. And then the scanning starts. And it all starts with a single A scan. An A scan is a single light beam that travels from the machine through the retina in three dimensional space and returns back to the machine. The A scans are then repeated at multiple points along the matrix, and each row is combined to form what is called a B scan. You're used to looking at B scans as standard OCT images, but this picture of the matrix is looking on FOSS down at the retina to understand how the image is acquired. Again, the image of an OCT is acquired using multiple A scans in sequence to create a B scan. Now extend the concept. If you think of the whole grid, you essentially have multiple B scans in sequence creating a C scan. And again, each block is formed by an A scan. Each row is called a B scan and looking at all the B scans in an on FOSS manner which simply means looking down onto the retina as opposed to bread cutter slices through the retina. Well, all those B scans viewed on FOSS are called a C scan. All of that is standard OCT capture technology, but to capture an OCTA, you need one more step. And that is to repeat the B scan over and over at the same location. Once you do this, you have repetitive B scans that can be decorrelated. This means that if an A scan at, let's say, this point here has a certain value at time point one, and then you repeat the A scan in that same location later in time, it should, if nothing has changed, have the same value. But if you repeat it again and the value is different, then the only thing that could possibly be causing the change is flow. So again, repetitive B scans are decorrelated to determine flow. Let me show you this in another way. Here 
you have a patient that's entering an OCT device. A scanning matrix will be set up. And then the machine fires light beams into the eye. Motion of red blood cells is detected by sequential B scans. These are performed repeatedly at the same location up to four times. And based on the properties of the light reflected from the blood cells, motion is detected and vessels with blood flow are identified. Of course, this all relies on the fact that the retina must be very still. But in reality, people blink and move their eyes, so you really need good eye tracking software to capture an OCTA image so that the scanning matrix always stays fixed in the same location. All right, now that you have all of the data, you need a way to analyze it. And this is where the concept of a C scan comes into play. Recall that a combined series of B scans is called a C scan. And colloquially, we call this an on FOSS image. You can imagine there are hundreds of thin cuts you can make peeling off the retina micron by micron. But this is not practical. So what the machine does is create a slab. A slab is simply a series of C scans compressed all together to enable viewing. And we can create slabs of any type. In this example, you see the superficial, deep, and a vascular slab. And you can do neat things with color overlays and viewing all sorts of different slabs that I'll show you soon. But now that you have all of this data, you need a way to view it. And this is where the software of the viewing station comes into play. You can navigate through different preset slabs. You can compare your OCTA view to the ONFOSS C scan. And you can visualize the B scan. And you can even overlay flow data onto the B-scan. The bottom line is that the OCTA software is quite powerful and allows you to manage the massive amount of data that these machines generate. Let's see how this relates to a simple patient case. Here is an example of a patient with choroidal neovascularization. This is a fluorescein angiogram in the early phase and it demonstrates a classic appearance in the early phase of a CNV lesion. If you overlay the OCTA, you can see much more vascular detail. But recall that the really cool thing about this image is it's obtained not in an eye that was injected with fluorescein contrast. Rather, it's occurring without contrast dye by using the concept of decorrelation and slab creation. Now there is a ton here that we could talk about and dissect, but I really wanted to stay focused on the basics as a way to help slingshot your learning. And I think our review today has served as a great starting point. So here we are at this crossroads of the past and the future that we call the present, and this is an exciting time for retinal imaging. OCTA is resulting in a transformative change. The technology is blossoming, and only with understanding and focused practice will you be able to successfully integrate it to help your patients. iCarePD is here to help as a partner in your professional development. To that end, if you would like to learn more about the basics of OCTA interpretation, be sure to check out part two of this video lecture. And on that note, this is Dr. David signing off, and I am always learning.